Hi, everyone. Welcome back. When last we talked, we were talking about enthalpy or changes of enthalpy in a chemical reaction. And remember, that's just another way for us chemists of saying the heat absorbed or released in a chemical reaction. So if we look at, at this particular chemical reaction, it says that when one mole of propane burns in oxygen, it reacts with five moles of oxygen to create three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of water. And the delta H, or the heat of that reaction, is negative 2,044 kilojoules. The negative sign means that that was released to the environment. The environment, the surroundings around this reaction got hotter, and the chemicals themselves lost 2,044 kilojoules of heat energy. So we want to continue on with this topic and talk about an idea called Hess's Law. Hess's law states that if a reaction can be expressed as a series of steps, then delta H for that reaction is the sum of the heats of reaction for each step. So let's consider this, this hypothetical example where we have A and B chemicals reacting. So this reaction says that, that uh, the overall reaction is chemical A reacts with two moles of chemical B to make two moles of chemical D. And we're going to express that as the following steps. Step one, A reacts with 2B to form chemical C, followed by C decomposing into 2D. So you can see that, that overall, you started out with an A and two Bs, and you end with two Ds. And one quick notation thing here is we can, oops, went for, too far forward. We can cross out the C's in this reaction because a C was formed and then a C was a reactant in the next reaction. So it was formed and then it was unformed in the next step. And you can do this throughout any steps in a reaction just to show that the reactants that start with and the products that end with are the same as the overall reaction and that anything else that was made in the reaction then reacts in a later step. So then if we look at an energy diagram for this, we could see that first step is A, reacting with 2B, absorbs energy from the surroundings. The second step of C, reacting to form 2Ds, releases lots more energy to the surroundings. So the overall reaction, it started out at A and 2B, went down in overall energy, releasing heat to the surroundings. So you can see this graph over here, and you can see that, that we can turn that into equation. Delta H3 is the overall reaction, is equal to delta H number one, that first step, plus delta H number two, the second step. And since delta H number two is a large negative number, the overall reaction is a negative delta H, or heat released to the surroundings. So let's work on a problem like this. So the problem says that given the following information, these, these three reactions calculate delta H for the reaction below. So we're going to express this reaction below, this, this large reaction here, as the sum of these steps. And you have to solve this sort of like a puzzle. And it, it definitely takes some doing. So my recommendation is that you watch me and then come back to this point and write this down and see if you can redo it immediately after I've done it with the exact same reactions. So let's dive in. Let's look at this first reaction. So if we're trying to express this overall reaction down here as a series of these steps. So let's take the first step and analyze it really quickly. It says 2NO plus 1O2 reacts to form 2NO2s. If we look at our reaction, we see that, that this reaction is sort of reverse of how we would want it. Because in our reaction, we have NO2 as a reactant and NO as a product. But up here, we have NO as a reactant and NO2 as a product. So that's the first problem. The second problem is we don't have the right numbers of things. The NO2s here, there's only two moles in this reaction, but in our overall reaction, we'd need three moles. So we can change this reaction as long as we change it consistently and change the delta H value along with it. So the first way we're going to change it is we're just going to reverse it. So if we write the reaction as the reverse and write NO2 as the reactant and NO and O2 as the products, then it will line up with our overall reaction. But what we have to do, if we've reversed the direction, we've reversed the sign of the delta H. So instead of negative 16 kilojoules,
for that overall reaction, we now have it as positive 116 kilojoules for that overall reaction. Next, we need to deal with the coefficients. Since there were only two NO2s in the step one reaction, but there are three in the overall reaction, then we need to multiply it by 1.5 to change the coefficients to match. So that's fine as long as we also multiply the delta H by 1.5. Then we'll do it with the next reaction. The next reaction appears to be in the right order because nitric acid here is a product. And in our overall reaction, nitric acid is also a product. The only problem here is that we're producing four nitric acids in the, the step two reaction and we're producing two nitric acids in the overall reaction. So we're just going to need to multiply that by 0.5. We need half of that reaction to happen so that we get two HNO3s. So we just need to do the same thing with the delta H, bring the negative 256 kilojoules down, multiply it by 0.5. And this, this illustrates what we're going to do. The only things that we're ever going to do is either keep the reaction in its current order or reverse it. If we reverse it, we need to change the sign. And then use a multiplier to adjust the value of the coefficient to match the overall reaction. Those are the only two things we need to do. Last, we'll take this, this final reaction, and it's going to be a little bit complicated, but you can essentially just look and see. Um, it, you can look at the products and reactants as well, or you can look at what you need to be canceling out in this reaction. And what we need to be canceling out here is N2 and O2. We've already made NO as a product. So it needs to be canceled out as a reactant because it's not in the it's in the overall reaction, but it's not in the quantities of this step one reaction. So we need to cancel out some of those. And we've used N2 and O2 as reactants, and they're not in the overall reaction at all. So we need to cancel out N2s and O2s. So this reaction doesn't match up with our overall reaction, except that it's canceling out unneeded things in our other two steps. So it's the most complicated one. And we're, we're going to go ahead and reverse it. So we change the sign from positive 183 kilojoules to negative 183 kilojoules. So let's see how this actually works to cancel out the unneeded stuff and add up to the overall reaction. So first, we're going to actually change this to go ahead and multiply these coefficients through to make our life a little easier. So we're going to multiply 1.5 times 2. That's going to become a 3. 1.5 times 2. This one's going to become a 3. And that one's going to be a 1.5. So that's right here. We've done the same thing on the second one, and now let's see what we can cancel out. The first thing that we'll cancel out is in the step one reaction, we have three moles of NO, and in the step three reaction, as a reactant, is two moles of NO. So the two moles as a reactant cancels two of the moles of NO as a product, leaving just one mole of NO, which is what we needed in our overall reaction. Then we'll cancel out our, our nitrogens. They aren't anywhere in the overall reaction, so hopefully they all cancel out. And here we have one mole of N2 as a reactant and one mole of N2 as a product. So those cancel out. Then our oxygens. This is the most complicated one because it appears in all three reactants or reactions. In step one and step three, it's a product of the reaction. So you have a total of 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5 moles as a product, and the step two reaction has 2.5 moles of O2 as a reactant. So those cancel out as well, leaving us with our overall reaction of three moles of NO2 plus one mole of water, which comes from right here, react to form two moles of nitric acid, which comes from right here, and one mole of NO. We add up the delta H's after reversing the signs when we needed to and multiplying them by the changes in coefficients. And we get negative 137 kilojoules for this overall reaction. All right, so like I said, I recommend right now pausing this video and going back and seeing if you could do what I just did, the same thing on your own. And if you can't, you can just follow the steps that I showed again so that you can see how that that works out. So you do have to treat Hess's law problems like this, just sort of like a puzzle, and go with it 
this isn't useful in itself, but it's useful because it has an application that we'll be talking about in the next video that's incredibly useful for us. So bear with us at this time, treat it like a puzzle, have some fun with it. It's hard, it's difficult, but it actually really applies really well to something that becomes much easier in the next discussion that we'll have. So put in some time and I promise it'll pay off. See you next video.